I'm honored to have this job. Whatever one thinks of POTUS, um, for me it's a great honor. I've known him for a very long time, interviewed him many times on CNBC, on radio. But I kind of look at it, you know, it's not so much a job, it's an honor. Okay. I mean, I served in the White House OMB a long time ago, 35 years plus. This is a more senior position. Sure. Um, Probably, Jimmy, it's the most fun I've ever had, if you really? want to know the truth. Even though we know, uh, by your own admission, there are various factions within. Oh, yes. uh, and you oh, have yes. to get the president's attention. You have to keep the president's attention. What happens if he ends up not agreeing with you? Um, you know, you win a few and you lose a few in these jobs, like anything else. Um, sometimes you agreed with me. Right. Sometimes we didn't agree. You know, look, um, he. I will say this. President Trump has been very open, very accessible to me. I see him quite a bit during the day, lots of meetings. Sometimes you get an afternoon call, come downstairs to talk about one thing or another. Sometimes you're traveling on the airplane. Um, he's just been great. He's open. And in meetings with uh, five or six or eight who knows people, uh, he'll go to me. Larry, what do you think? And I tell him. It's my job to tell Even when, say, Larry, what do you think? We're having a big fight with China. Well, you know, it's, um, of course, I like that fight with China. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with all the trade tactics. We'll talk about that some. But my point is, um, he really enjoys the back and forth, to his credit. Uh, I think he's greatly underrated in that respect. He thinks and processes. He loves facts, figures, charts. Uh, he's very attentive. When he disagrees, he'll let you know and know on certain terms. But look, on the whole, I mean, obviously, I helped draft the tax and economic stuff during the campaign. I mean, we, we agree on almost everything. And where we don't agree, we talk it through. And he's been just wide open and accessible to me. And I, I just love that. And I will say this, the great thing about the national, uh, I mean, I'm an assistant to the president, National Economic uh, Council. We have our fingers in everything. That's what makes this really fun job. Every darn thing under the sun, including stuff uh, about which I know virtually nothing, and I have a Cracker Jack staff uh, to help teach me. So, except for Cullo and Kramer, Jimmy, this is the most fun I've oh, ever had. Uh, yeah, I want to bring it back to Cullo and Kramer, why we ended up having such a great time is we're both serious optimists. I, mean, I think serious, so. rigorous optimists. I think so. And I know, Larry, you must be thinking the way that Brian Moynihan did the other day when he was on Mad Money. He's talking 4% GDP. Yeah. And we're all confused, and you're the, you're the economist. How do you have a flat yield curve, 4% GDP, and have so many people who are gloomy? You know, it's interesting about all that. It looks like it's 4-ish. Um, I, I don't, I know nothing more than you know right. at this point, informationally. But, um, it could be higher. I'd be thrilled if it was three plus, because that was our baseline. Everybody yelled at me uh, during the campaign, after the campaign, and when I came into this office. Oh, you'll never get three, you'll never get three, including many dear friends of mine in the Democratic Party, who I respect enormously. We are getting three, and it may be four for a quarter or two. It may be plus, uh, I don't know, but that's all to the good. Um, you know, literally millions more people are working. I mean, I mean, if, if you can't, if you go into these jobs, what's the key point? The key point in my judgment, the best way I can help the country is get the economy strong and prosperous. You know, I mean, you've got millennials out there. I'm just going to depart for one second no, no, for your question. Then I want to come we're back partners. to your GDP. The old days. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, um, no, no, we're, we're not adversaries. Let's put it that way. You've got kids, millennials, et cetera, uh, some of whom are working in the, in the White House in junior positions, who have never seen a full-fledged, long-lasting prosperity, honestly. And they, they don't know what I'm talking about. They must think it's about to roll over at every minute? Every minute. I mean, they just won't believe it. It's not that they're cynics. They've just never seen it. We haven't had one in 20 years, right. okay? You and I professionally grew up, maybe, I, I, I was through the stagflationary 70s, but the 80s and 90s, uh, under both parties, were fabulous prosperities. Right. And to me, that's the game. You, you, you go into these things, that's what you want to do. Do whatever you believe is best.
to generate a long live prosperity. You know, there's 155 million Americans working. I believe we can get that up to 160 million or even better. Um, we haven't had any productivity. I believe we can do that uh, through taxes and regulation. That's why you do these things. In other words, you want to leave it better than you got it. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.